SpaceX is busy on all fronts from its bread and butter commercial satellite launches to planning its ultimate future of deep space transportation and multi-planetary colonization SpaceX is working towards getting a prototype of Starship in the air with planned launches coming in just two to three months if SpaceX CEO Elon Musk manages to meet his optimistic timeline it recently completed an untethered hop low altitude test flight of Starhopper a subscale demonstration version of the Starship design meant to help it test that crafts Raptor engine but SpaceX must also show that it has fully considered the potential consequences that its planned launch operations will have on the surrounding environment SpaceX Starship a 384 foot 117 meter reusable two-stage rocket taller than the Statue of Liberty is a central piece of Musk's interplanetary space travel ambitions as well as US Space Agency NASA's goal to send humans to the moon again by 2024 SpaceX Starship and Super Heavy will launch from Florida with the current plan to build a second launch mount at its current launch complex 39A launch pad at Kennedy Space Center which it leases from NASA and currently uses for Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy launches an environment assessment prepared by SpaceX and released by NASA August 1st discusses plans to develop additional facilities at launch complex 39a for use by the company's Starship vehicle and its super heavy booster in this video engineering today will discuss SpaceX's plans for Starship launches from Kennedy Space Center why SpaceX is expanding its Florida facilities to accommodate the Starship launch let's get into details the plans outlined in the environment assessment document call for the construction of a new launch mount at the complex near the existing one used by the Falcon 9 and heavy the modifications to the pad would also include a tank farm for the methane fuel used by the Raptor engines that power SpaceX Starship and Super Heavy as for what will happen to the old launch tower in pad 39a Musk said it won't change Starship launch structure will be attached to the other side from tower after launching from launch complex 39a the current plan is the Starship upper stage would initially land at the company's existing landing zone a at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station which is SpaceX's current landing area for Falcon first stage boosters but the company plans to build a pad near the new launch mount at launch complex 39a to support SpaceX Starship landings at a future date the intent of landing Starship back much closer to where it launches this will require more study to determine its viability and impact however so SpaceX has left that consideration for future investigation for now super heavy would land downrange aboard a drone barge ship like the twin of course I still love you and just read the instructions ships that SpaceX uses now depending on mission conditions on both its East and West Coast launches although the report noted that SpaceX may later have the booster return to land the launch complex 39a facilities will be able to support up to 24 Starship or super heavy launches a year a static fire test would be conducted on each stage before each launch SpaceX said in a report it also cites the continued use of the Falcon fleet at a very high launch cadence for at least another five years SpaceX plans to increase the Falcon launch frequency to 20 launches per year from launch complex 39a and up to 50 launches per year from launch complex 40 by the year 2024 added the report SpaceX is hoping to move to the use of Starship and super heavy as its primary vehicle but had noted that they will continue to use Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy based on customer demand 
Due to the higher lift capability, SpaceX Starship and Super Heavy could launch more payloads and reduce the overall launch cadence when compared to Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy, the report states. SpaceX says in the draft assessment that it also considered potentially launching and landing Starship and Super Heavy from its Space Launch Complex 40 and Space Launch Complex 4 launch sites, which are at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station and Vandenberg Air Force Base, respectively. But these would not offer enough space in the case of Space Launch Complex 40 or would require too long a trip back to the launch site in the case of Space Launch Complex 4 which would be an overland, cross-country U.S. road trip for a huge rocket. The company ruled out the sites because they would require more modifications and because the Vandenberg site didn't support trajectories for the vast majority of missions. SpaceX also notes that it may, in the future, develop and launch the Starship and Super Heavy from its facility in Cameron County, Texas. A Texas-based launch site would have benefits in terms of proximity to one of SpaceX's key rocket and engine development facilities. And if it's successful in making its reusable launch and landing system extremely consistent in performance, the downsides of not being near a large body of water could be mitigated. These plans, however, will also merit separate consideration. So don't expect full-scale launches for Starship from Texas in the near future. Launch Complex 39A provides the best combination of available real estate, existing developments, distance from population centers, and available clear launch azimuths to maximize public safety for operational launches," the report concludes. Designed by NASA to support the first human missions to the Moon, Launch Complex 39A is one of the world's most capable launch sites with the infrastructure to support a wide variety of mission profiles. A SpaceX spokesperson said in a statement about the environmental assessment. As Starship development accelerates, SpaceX is working with our partners to support upgrading Launch Complex 39A's infrastructure to build upon past achievements and advance new capabilities in space. The report has no new details about the technical design of SpaceX Starship and Super Heavy. The report says that Super Heavy will use 31 Raptor engines, but SpaceX chief executive Elon Musk suggested in several tweets last month that the design now has 35 to 41 Raptor engines. Musk has indicated that he'll provide a more detailed update about the design of Starship and Super Heavy in the near future. SpaceX says most of the manufacturing work for the vehicles will be done at its Hawthorne, California headquarters. Some work could be done at the company's South Texas site near Bowmansville, Texas, as well as an industrial park in Cocoa, Florida. The company is currently building Starship prototypes at both locations. The report doesn't give a schedule for when such missions would begin from Kennedy Space Center, but notes those launches would perform a wide range of missions. Starship and Super Heavy missions would include lunar and Mars destinations, currently not supported by any other space vehicle, increased satellite payload missions, and human spaceflight, the report states. Some launches could take place in close succession, it added, such as lunar programs sending multiple payloads to resupply. The report hinted that SpaceX Starship Super Heavy missions could also play a role in NASA's lunar exploration plans stating that the plan to establish launch facilities at Launch Complex 39A may support NASA in meeting the U.S. goal of near-term lunar exploration. As SpaceX outlines its plans for eventual Starship and Super Heavy launches from Florida, the company is moving ahead with plans for continued testing of its Star Hopper prototype at its South Texas test site. A successful hop of the Star Hopper test vehicle was conducted last month, paving the way for a more ambitious 200-meter hop. Road closures announced this week by county officials there suggest the next Star Hopper test will take place sometime between August 12th and 14th. This date remains on track 
with a daylight hop planned. Hopper will again hop under the power of its SN6 Raptor, with the production of new Raptors moving ahead at pace in Hawthorne. The SN7 Raptor is already on the McGregor test stand, although it is currently not believed to be assigned to any related Starship vehicle. SN8 through SN13, pending successful testing as they travel through the McGregor test stand, are expected to be the six engines that will be installed on two prototype SpaceX Starship vehicles that continue construction at Boca Chica in Texas and Coco in Florida. Construction of the two prototype vehicles is at a similar stage at both sites, although progress has been easier to follow at the Boca Chica site, with bulkhead installation the latest milestone. The large fairings will be added to the stacks in the near future, which will provide a true perspective on the size of these test vehicles. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your valuable feedback in the comment section. This will help us to improve.